Cratylus is one of Plato's dialogues, engaging primarily with the philosophy of language and named after one of its main characters, Cratylus. The dialogue takes place between Socrates, Cratylus, and Hermogenes, each representing different viewpoints regarding the relationship between names, onomata, and the things they signify. Hermogenes introduces the primary theme of the dialogue. He suggests that names are merely conventional, assigned by agreement, and have no natural connection to the things they signify. His viewpoint is that names are arbitrary and that their appropriateness is a result of social contract rather than inherent suitability. Cratylus, a follower of Heraclitus, holds the opposite view, insisting on a natural correctness of names. According to him, names have an intrinsic relationship with the objects they denote, reflecting the essence of the thing named. Cratylus believes that language is not a human invention but is given by nature, implying that understanding the world around us involves knowing the true names of things. Socrates engages both Hermogenes and Cratylus in a dialectical examination of these positions. To question Hermogenes, Socrates suggests a link between naming and the craft of the namer, drawing an analogy with other crafts like painting or building. Just as a painter or builder must know the nature of their subject to represent or construct it properly, so must a namer know the nature of what they are naming to give it the correct name. If names are arbitrarily given, it would imply that the namer has no knowledge of the thing named, which Socrates finds problematic. With Cratylus, the discussion becomes deeper. Cratylus argues that if a name does not correspond to the essence of its object, it ceases to be a name. Socrates tests Cratylus's view by examining the origin and correctness of various names, employing etymology to uncover the supposed natural correctness of words. He deconstructs Cratylus's stance by suggesting that if names communicate the nature of things, there must be a name giver who knows the essences and could craft names to convey those essences accurately. However, Socrates reveals the difficulty in claiming that one can know the essence of things merely through their names since knowing the name does not necessarily equate to understanding the nature of the thing named. The conversation then moves into a broader discussion about whether knowing the names of things can lead to knowledge of the things themselves. Socrates questions the extent to which language can capture reality, suggesting that the fluidity of language and the complexity of reality may prevent names from ever fully conveying the essence of their objects. To further complicate matters, Socrates illustrates that through dialectic reasoning, one can arrive at different conclusions about the nature of things, which implies that the names themselves can be insufficient guides to truth. As the dialogue progresses, the discussion shifts to a more metaphorical consideration of naming as an art that reflects deeper philosophical concerns about knowledge and essence. The philosophical inquiry pushes the participants to consider the relationship between thought and reality, as well as the limits of human understanding. Ultimately, Socrates acknowledges that there is some correctness in names, but he also highlights the limitations of Cratylus's position, proposing a moderate view. He continues the inquiry by emphasizing the importance of understanding the essence of things rather than relying solely on their names. The dialogue does not offer a definitive resolution to the debate, but instead leaves the readers with a rich exploration of the themes of language, knowledge, and essence. Socrates tentatively concludes that while names may aim to capture the essence of things, they can only ever give us a reflection, not the essence itself. Thus, names are useful in guiding our inquiry into the nature of reality, but they cannot replace direct philosophical investigation. Knowledge arises not from names themselves, but from the dialectical process that examines and questions the things those names purport to signify. Lastly, Socrates touches upon the limitations of human knowledge and the importance of seeking knowledge through philosophical inquiry. To truly understand the essence of things, one must go beyond names and engage with the underlying reality they attempt to describe. The dialogue thus not only discusses the theory of language, but also employs it as a metaphor for the broader philosophical pursuit of wisdom. In Cratylus, Plato explores deep philosophical questions without reaching a neat conclusion, leaving it to the reader to think critically about the true nature of language and its relation to reality. 
The reader is encouraged to reflect on the imperfections of human communication, the fallibility of perception, and the seemingly unbridgeable gap between the world of forms, ideas, or essences, and the sensible world we experience through language and perception. This open-endedness is characteristic of many of Plato's dialogues, which are often more about raising profound philosophical questions than providing definitive answers.